Welcome to the tutorial video for Screencastify Submit. You may already be familiar with Screencastify. It's a screen recording tool. I'm using it right now. And it allows you to record what's on your screen. You can add a webcam in there so that people can see you and you can write using the tools. Well, that requires an extension to be added on to your computer. So Screencastify came up with Screencastify Submit, which is a tool that you can use with students. So it doesn't require anything to be installed. You do everything at the back end, which is really easy to do. You're going to send a link to students, and then using that link, students will be able to start a recording. And as soon as they finish that recording, it will submit it and save it into your Google Drive folder. So let's jump right in and create a new assignment, and I'll walk you through all the extra little bonus pieces that are in there as we go. You'll notice I have a couple assignments already created. Let's just ignore those for now. We're going to click on New Assignment. It only asks for two things. The first one is the title. The folder created to store all of your student responses is going to use this title for its name, so you want to make sure you're specific. So I'm going to say this is great for two digit by one digit multiplication. And my instructions to my students will be open the website, webwhiteboard.com, solve the problem, 12 multiplied by three, think aloud as you do your work. Make all of your thinking very obvious. Don't worry about making errors. Just keep recording. All right, so you can use whatever instructions that will be helpful for your students. And you don't have to have the instructions here. If you're using Google Classroom, you could just put those instructions in Google Classroom. It's, tot it's totally up to you where you want to put those, but I like to have it in both spots. Now just click Next. Now I have to decide do I want students to record what's on their screen? I'll leave it as screen and microphone. Or do I want to see them instead? I can choose webcam and microphone. It's an either or though. I like screen because then I can see them writing and I'm not putting videos of students' faces on the internet, but either way is fine. So I'm going to choose screen and microphone. The next option is to enable email notifications. So when a student submits a video, it will email you and say, hey, Johnny submitted a video. If you want to turn that off, you just turn it off by pushing the button. But I want to know when students have submitted it, so I'll leave it checked on. The last piece that you get to set is, do I want to share all my videos with submitters? What that means is if Johnny submits a video, he will be given access to that folder so that he can see all of the other videos. He can't delete them, he can't edit them, but he can see them. So there's lots of opportunities for that. You may want to have students put a video response to a poem or a story they've just read and have access to see other students' videos. But it, like I said, it won't allow them to respond to it in any way. They can just see what those look like. I'm going to leave that one turned off for now. Now I just click Next. It will create my new assignment. So my assignment's now live, and you'll notice there's a Google Classroom button in there. I haven't used this, but it should be super easy to throw that into Google Classroom. I can just copy the link, and I can use that to paste it into whatever tool I'm using to share assignments with students. So I've copied that, and I'll click Done. So now you'll notice that grade four, two digit by one digit multiplication shows up. My status is open, which means the link is active. Notice my two digit by one digit multiplication I created earlier says closed. So if a student tries to use that link now, that one won't work anymore. So the one I created today is open. It reminds me what date I created it. And right now I have zero submissions. You'll see my test video has one submission in there. So I know a student has responded. If I've lost that link that I need to share, I can just hit copy link here. And the final piece is the three dots here, which gives me two options. I can edit it or I can close the assignment so nobody else can submit. So I'll jump into edit. And now I can change my title. I can change my instructions if I want to. I'll click next. If I decide maybe I don't want the screen, maybe I want webcam instead, I can change that there. And then I can change the email notifications and the sharing in here as well. 
So now you've given the link to students and they are ready to use it. So I'm just going to open up a tab and pretend that I've clicked on the link as a student. This is what students will see. They'll see the title that you wrote up there. You will have the instructions and you'll notice it automatically made my link active, which is really nice. And it gives me the instructions for the work. Now, all they have to do is hit record and it is warning them that is going to record the microphone and the screen that it's not recording their webcam. So they'll hit record. And it will ask them to share their screen. So they will have to click in this area here on their screen. If it's not in blue, it won't work. Share will only show up when you've clicked on this screen here. And I'm going to leave share audio off because I don't want it to grab the audio from my computer. I could if I wanted to, but I don't need it to. So I will just leave that off and pick share. You'll notice that there is a countdown here, but I can also skip it if I want to. So I'm just going to jump over to web whiteboard and then I'm just going to create a free whiteboard. I like web whiteboard because you don't have to sign up for an account. If you just click create free whiteboard, it does have a paid version to it, but for students purposes, you don't need that. So I'm just going to go create free whiteboard. And this can be kind of slow sometimes if you're using this particular website, there's lots of different websites out there that you can use. So you choose whichever one you want to use with your students, whichever one your students are most comfortable with. So there is a little note on the screen right now that says this is a shared online whiteboard. So I can use web whiteboard to present ideas to students and they can see it and they can actually write on it as well. I can ignore all of the stuff that's at the top. I can ignore the fact that it expires in 21 days. So my student knows that the question is 12 multiplied by three. So they can use the pencil tools, the marker tools. They can use the text tool to write down the question. And then as a student, so I'm just going to write 12 multiplied by three. So I might solve it as a student this way using the area model. 10 plus two multiplied by three. 10 multiplied by three is 30. 2 multiplied by 3 is 6, 30 plus 6 is 36. So as soon as finished their recording, in order to stop the video, I have to go back to where it says it's recording. So right at the top, my tab here says grade 4, two digit by two digit uh, multiplication. It's recording. So I'll just come back in here and hit stop recording. It says it's processing your video, might take a minute, don't close the tab. So don't close the tab while you're doing that. All right, so the video is done. I can, as a student, watch the video. So I'm just going to jump. I can start over, but I would encourage students not to worry about starting over. It's not about having the perfect response. It's about having an authentic response. And then they'll hit submit. So as soon as they hit submit, it starts submitting the video. They can share that video to their classroom and they can download it for themselves if they want. So if they're worried that there might be issues, then they can go ahead and do that. Now, as a teacher, when I want to see students' responses, I come back to Screencastify Submit and I can see, oh, look, a student submitted a video. So I can click on that number one there and will automatically take me to my Google Drive and it will automatically name the video with the student's name and their email address. And then I can see the video in there, which I can then open up and I can see the video all there. So again, when I'm done and I don't want to receive any more recordings, I can just come back into these three dots and I can close the assignment. So then students won't be able to use that link. I don't have to delete it from Google Classroom. It will be there. And that's it for Screencastify Submit. So hopefully you found this video helpful and I'll see you in future videos.